or frustrated and to a degree I have to be honest about embittered him some um, in later years was the fact that he continually had this comparison thrust on him that uh, any time he would uh, have an interview or meet uh, a company uh, in a business context there were the frequent questions did you really go flying when IBM came to visit what you know what really happened so that would frequently be asked and that was always a frustration because Gary was a person that I think was very proud of his achievements of the fact that he actually um, was instrumental in building this open architecture that we have in the industry. I think Gary's view was that uh, what happened happened. I think he, if anything, regretted that people didn't appreciate the contributions he made. I think all people who are really driven to, to do something and who are very bright spend some time wondering about the ones that got away. But I think of all the people I've known in business, Gary worried the least about the ones that got away. DRI's loss of the IBM contract was Microsoft's gain and the beginning of Microsoft's ascent to software stardom. But the reasons for IBM's decisions are still fuzzy and subject to different interpretations. I think what really changed the perspective from IBM's standpoint had to do with the fact that when Gates got involved, he basically said, look, we'll do whatever you need. We'll put energy, we'll put people, we'll work as hard as we can to make this happen. As opposed to the way Gary Kildell and his folks looked at it, which was, oh, here's another project. Remember, Kildell had already reached a certain level of uh, success at that point, where at this particular time, Gates and the folks at Microsoft were in their very early stages. But I think that there's also some, I don't think blame's exactly the right word, but some responsibility goes to the customers as well, because uh, if IBM had, um, had not put all of their eggs in the Microsoft basket, they wouldn't be, have the problem that they do today, trying to sell Warp against, you know, an OS2 against uh, the monster that they kind of created. Whatever the reason, the competition between DRI and Microsoft seemed to become a personal battle between Gary Kildall and Bill Gates, at least in the public eye. Well, Gary always considered Bill Gates a very good friend. Uh, in those early days, they all uh, sat, uh, they all were very friendly with each other and cooperative. And certainly Bill Gates says today that he sent or uh, sent uh, IBM to, to DRI when they were looking for the operating system. Um, I was on a panel uh, that uh, Ben Rosen uh, put on for the Rosen Forum in those very early days. And um, Gary got up and talked about what his plans were for CPM and where the company was going and, and then made a comment. Uh, well, this is a very large market and there's room, there are room, there's room for lots of companies. And Bill Gates interrupted and he said, no, there'll only be one company. Gary Kildall's life cannot be summed up by any one incident. It was made up of many notable accomplishments and a constant desire to innovate. His numerous contributions to the PC industry are evident, if not always recognized. To those who knew him well, it was the delight of discovery, and not the money, that drove him. And I think that in his mind, what he was always looking for is, what is it that he could get or do or create with the technology that would be his big win? And that was elusive. And in fact, the fact that it was elusive, I think, played very heavily on the way he lived his, the latter part of his life. Gary Kildall's untimely death in 1994 at the age of 52 was a reminder that the light of genius is transitory and fragile. To his many friends and associates, it was a warning that we should cherish our relationships while we can. He is among a very small group of people that helped change the world in the 70s, and I think another group of people have taken advantage of it uh, in the 80s and the 90s and I'm sure that that's will continue but Gary made a difference I think he knew he made a difference and certainly the people who knew Gary knew he made a difference I think at this point in time it would be a shame to have Gary forgotten as being a person that was instrumental to the growing of this this whole industry itself Gary was somebody that had an infectious enthusiasm 
Um, if you go out in the industry and talk with associates that he worked with at a business level, knew Gary as a person that enjoyed, um, enjoyed the warmth of human contact, that enjoyed going to parties, to, to be very personable. He was not somebody that restricted uh, his focus to, to just the decision makers and the people that were leading the businesses and whatever. He was somebody that had a, a breadth of interests and, and was a very, uh, very open person. So I think it would be a real loss if, if all that the industry remembers about Gary is he was the guy that was flying the day IBM came. Because he was a much, much more of a person and, much, and contributed a great deal to this industry. Gary did make a difference. He was a genius and a gentleman, a rare combination. Gary did make a lot of money, but he was driven by an honest desire to create new ideas that could expand the human potential. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Stuart Chaffee.